I started off being like, I understand, I have empathy for you, I will use your pronouns of choice. You know, I'm not going to say you're a woman, but you're a trans woman. And now I am realizing that all of those things are gateway drugs to the co-opting of female sports and the word female and the word woman and breastfeeding and childbearing and menstruation, all the things that are under solidly the list of what is a woman. You don't know the first thing about being a woman. You have no idea what the average woman has been through the course of her life, the challenges we have, the beauty of being a woman, the softness of being a woman, and you never will. And I'm done engaging in this fiction, Paul. I'm done. I have empathy, I have compassion, but I am not willing to abandon truth in the name of sparing feelings. Was Megyn Kelly, American journalist, wrong for this take? I'm going to share with you a video clip from Megyn Kelly's podcast. If you don't know her, she was uh, a news anchor for Fox News for a handful of years. She was a news anchor for NBC for a little while as well. Now she's got her own podcast where she does commentary on things happening in the world. And she made a comment specifically about men who identify as women and where she, uh, you know, what her take is is on that. As you've probably seen over the past couple of years, this phenomenon seems to have gone through the roof. It seems to have gone mainstream. Uh, it seems to become a lot more uh, in your face than ever before, um, for better or for worse. And I will hear what she has to say. But my goal is today to hear what she has to say here. She has a very strong take. This video clip has gone viral. And my my desire is to take what she says, look at what's happening culturally and globally, and then to get a biblical view of what's happening here and how we as people who want to follow God, who want to see what is right, what is wrong, what is the way that we should go, how should we interpret what's happening with this phenomenon. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to share the video clip of what she says, and then we're going to uh, we're gonna break it down a little bit, and uh, we're going to go into what's happening globally. We're going to see like what if there's any truth to what she's saying, but I think this is such an important topic right now, not because it's hot and trending, but the reality is, is that the world is taking this topic to a whole other level. They're putting the pedal down. They want to talk about this. And I believe that we as people who follow the word of God, who are filled with the Holy Spirit, we should have a, a response. We should know what to say about what's going on here. So let's see what she has to say. And let's see, um, let's just see where it goes from there, okay? So here's an interview that she had on Sky News Australia, and she's referring to this guy named Dylan Mulvaney. Who's Dylan Mulvaney? Dylan Mulvaney is a, is a guy who believes that he's a woman who has been really kind of paraded around all over the mainstream media, has partnered with Bud Light recently. You've probably seen how Bud Light's stock went through the floor because of that partnership, invited to the White House, um, and this person who identifies as a woman has been just like really put out in the front for everybody to see and is now becoming a, it's kind of, he's, they're using him. He's being used to really spearhead this, this movement, this agenda, if you would. So let's see what Megyn Kelly has to say about this. Pronouns of choice. You know, I'm not going to say you're a woman, but you're a woman. And now I am realizing that all of those things are gateway drugs to the co-opting of female sports and the word female and the word woman and breastfeeding and childbearing and menstruation, all the things that are under solidly the list of what is a woman. And I'm really done. I'm done. I, I, there is no such thing as a, a, somebody who's born a biological man who is secretly a woman, who, who can become a woman. At best, you are a woman. And even that I'm wrestling with. I really am. I don't even really understand what that is. You're a person. You're really a biological man who's got some gender confusion issues, and my heart goes out to you. But you're not a woman. You, Dylan Mulvaney, you put on a dress, you, you take a bunch of estrogen to grow something that approximates baby breasts. I don't know what those are. That, that's not what a, what a woman is. You'll never be a woman. You could have the surgery. Dylan says they're getting bottom surgery. Go ahead, have your penis chopped off. You're still not a woman. Getting a surgeon to cut a hole down there doesn't make you a woman. You don't know the first thing about being a woman. You have no idea what the average woman has been through the course of her life, the challenges we have, the beauty of being a woman, the softness of being a woman, and you never will. 
You're never going to have it. Doesn't matter how many surgeries. Doesn't matter how many hormones. And I'm done engaging in this fiction, Paul. I'm done. I have empathy. I have compassion. But I am not willing to abandon truth in the name of sparing feelings. But also, I mean. Okay, so let's pause right there. Lots to discuss as we're as you're seeing this video, and as I kind of break down what um, what my thoughts are. One thing you're, you'll notice is I'm intentionally bleeping out a specific word, and the reason why is not because the word is a bad word, but for the sake of YouTube and getting this video out to further people, the algorithms get tripped up with stuff like that. So being very careful about that now. One thing that I want to say that really sticks out to me about what she just talked about, Miss uh, Megan Kelly, she went out first saying um, that you know she's talking about being done with this whole agenda. She's talking about being done pretending like something is true when it's not. I saying that you are uh, you identify as a female when you're born as a biological male. She's saying that you you're you you can pretend, you can identify, you can say all you want, but biologically the truth is you are not a woman. And is she wrong? I mean science would show that she's not wrong. It's a matter of fact that what she's saying is correct. She goes on to say that she's got empathy for these people, she cares about these people, but she's done with going along with these this, this pronoun game co-opting and agreeing that this is true. And the reason why she makes the claim is because it's a quote unquote gateway drug. She says that if you agree with these things, if you if you start using these pronouns and uh, and honoring people's pronouns or their preferred pronouns, it opens up this door, this gateway to co-opting with a nebulous definition of what a woman is. It opens up the door to start giving men who identify as women the same privileges and really more so protections that are reserved for women. Now, is she going too far with this? Is she wrong in this take? I'm going to share with you my opinion more towards the end, but I want to show you something that's pretty staggering because what we're talking about here is, is something that, as I mentioned, seems to have exploded recently. Can you even remember a time when this wasn't such a mainstream topic. It was more of a fringe topic where people, it was more rare, it wasn't as common to talk about, but now it's in our faces more than ever. I wanna show you this chart right here. This chart is actually, the source is from Gallup. Gallup is probably the, if not, one of, if not the most credible and trustworthy uh, statistic organizations out there, polling, really gathering data. And here's what they've discovered, okay? This is this includes people in the LG uh, community, and so on and so forth. So it's not just people who identify as the other gender, but it says, it, it shows you the increase from one generation to the next of people that identify in this category. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more for you. Look at this, okay? So it shows in 2014, you have millennials, you have Gen X, you have baby boomers, and you have traditionalists. And it shows you how many of this gener of, of each of these generations identify in this category in this community. In 2014, Gen uh, millennials, Gen Z isn't even in this part yet, over 5%. And then in 2017, only three years later, that jumps to about, looks like maybe 7%-ish. Seven, uh, 7 and you see the, the older generations, they're not really moving up much at all. In 2020, Gen Z enters the picture. Gen Z is over 15%. In three years from, or, you know, three years after they enter the picture, they're over 15%. And millennials are creeping up to 10%. And then in 2022, it goes from over just over 15% to almost 20% for Gen Z. Now look at these charts, okay? Why is this happening? Why do we see from one generation to the next this exponential growth? Not, not a linear growth, not even a multiplicative growth, but an exponential growth. What are we going to see for the following generation, Gen Alpha? Is it going to be north of 20%? Is it going to cap out here? I think if you look, if you're going to have an honest look at statistics, you got to look at this and, and say honestly that the next generation 
is not going to be less if this keeps on going in this trajectory. It's going to be more. It's going to get closer and closer to 50%. What does this mean? Is it wrong to ask the question, what does this mean? To me, when we look at this, the question that we need to ask ourselves is, is this a biological phenomenon at large or are we creating this culturally with the content that people are consuming, with the people that are being propagated on mainstream media for everybody, millions of people to see? Are we normalizing this to the degree that we are creating this phenomenon? Is this something that it just happens naturally or, or are we as a culture moving this forward? So you might be looking at this and asking yourself the question, who cares? Let people do what they want. And if this makes them happy, then let's, let's not interfere in their lives. Sure, I can absolutely agree. Let people make their own decisions. We live in a free country, freedom of speech, freedom to do what you want to do. But I'm going to go into, in, into how this is actually more dangerous than we think that it really is, how it's actually affecting more people than, than you might think in a negative way. And also, what, what would the Bible have to say about this? Let's go into here. Check this out. I want to show you this article. This article from the Post Millennial, it says that T kids are prescribed more, excuse me, sorry about that, more antipsychotic meds after beginning gender transition than before, according to the study. This is new, by the way. It's May 5th, 2023. This just came out. Let's read what this article has to say. A 2021 study of military youth has revealed that not only were minors with severe mental illness allowed to embark upon experimental medical SEX changes, but also that prescription for antipsychotic drugs actually increased after hormonal interventions were initiated, reports Fox News. The study, published in the Journal of Sexual Medicine, examined the Department of Defense DOD medical records of 3,700 trans-identified or T-identified adolescents and 6,600 siblings who did not identify as TRANS. The findings revealed no improvement in mental health after commencing hormone interventions and an increase in prescriptions for psychotropic medication. And then it goes on to say, among 963 uh, T and gender diverse youth using gender affirming pharmaceuticals, mental health care did not significantly change and psychotropic medications increased following gender affirming pharmaceutical initiation. Older age was associated with decreased care and prescriptions. Reads this. So this is what the article says, because a lot of people will say, especially for the, the younger generation, they these these kids who feel like they're in the wrong body, they are going to be more depressed they're going to want to end their lives, they're et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's likely true. They're prob- if they're in that state of confusion and dysphoria, they're probably not going to be very happy. So let's let them get these transitioning uh, procedures, intervention methods, and then they'll be okay. But this is what this says here. It says a 2021 study of military youth has revealed that not only were minors with severe mental illness allowed to embark upon experimental medical SEX changes, but also that prescriptions for antipsychotic drugs are actually increased, actually increased after hormonal interventions were initiated, reports Fox News. The study published in the Journal of Sexual Medicine examined the Department of Defense medical records of 3,700 uh, T identified adolescents and 6,600 siblings who did not identify as T. The findings reveal no improvement, no improvement in mental health after commencing hormone interventions and an increase in prescriptions for psychotropic medications. No, no uh, improvement and an increase in prescriptions. What does this mean, guys? This means that the very thing that we're trying to fix is not actually getting fixed, it's actually getting worse. The people who say that we're gonna do this, we're gonna propagate this, we're gonna continue to push this forward and allow as many people to have this as possible so that they can become healthy mentally, it could actually be doing the very opposite. 
This is one study. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot more that we need to look at in regards, in, in regards to long-term effects. But what this study is showing is, hey, this is actually not doing the thing that we want it to do. Granted, I haven't looked deep into the study, but this is, this is something that we need to be talking about. If the goal of this is to help people and, and, and get them in a place of better mental health, and let's just let them do whatever they want to do so that they can be happy and like, what's it up to you? Well, first of all, I don't think that this is really even helping people. I don't think it look, it would seem like this is actually making the problem worse for a lot of people. <clears throat> let's go on here. Cause now, cause the question again is if it doesn't matter, if it's not about my life, if it's not affecting me, why should I care? I want to show you an article from The Guardian here. It was on uh, January 26, 2023, so just this year. Here's what the title says. Woman found guilty of rape moved to men's prison. Okay? So move follows Nicola Sturgeon telling MSPs uh, would not, uh, Isla Bryson would not be detained at all female court in Vale, which I guess is a female institution or, you know, a prison. It says... Isla Bryson, a transgender woman found guilty of raping two women before transitioning, has been moved from Scotland's all-female court and veil prison to a male facility after an intervention by Nicola Sturgeon. The first minister told MSPs earlier on Thursday that Bryson would not be incarcerated in the women's prison, either short-term or long-term, after a report saying the offender had been transferred there on Tuesday prior to sentencing prompted outrage across the political and campaigning spectrum. So you have a person here who identifies as a man, or excuse me, identifies as a woman who's biologically a man, was placed in an all-female prison because he simply identified as a woman, and then they discovered that this dude was guilty of raping two women. This dude was guilty of raping two women before transitioning and then they said, okay, we should probably move this person to an all-male prison. Why am I showing you this? Because this is the slippery slope. When, we allow, when we're reconstructing truth and reality around what these people feel, we want to love them. We want to have empathy for them, for sure. But when we reconstruct all of society around these people's desires, we are creating an extremely dangerous environment for women, it kind of blows my mind that we've even gotten to this place to think that this is okay, that this just because this person who is a criminal identifies as a woman, that, oh, well, let's put you with all the women. Like, how does that, it's wild to me because those who would fight for women's rights, who are feminists, you should be outraged at this stuff. You should look at this and say, this makes absolutely no sense. Why are we allowing this to happen? If we really care about women and their rights, we we gotta we have to stand up against this stuff, and it's wild because I don't I don't see a lot of men doing what Megyn Kelly is doing. I don't see a lot of men having the courage to say what this woman is saying. But I believe that we as Christians have a responsibility to have an opinion about this. We as Christians have a responsibility to speak truth in situations like this. Let me show you what it says right here. This is what it says in 1 Corinthians 14, 33. It says, For God is not a God of disorder or confusion, but of peace. God is not the author of confusion. Confusion is not from God. People might say, well, I was born this way. I was born this confused. Yeah, we might be born that way, but the Bible says in Psalm 51 that we were born into iniquity. We are all broken. The Bible says that we are all sinners who have fallen short of the glory of God. We, we are corrupted by our rebellion against God. Of course, we're going to be confused, but that's not God's will for us. God's will is not to give us confusion, but a sound mind. He wants to give us order so that we can live his best for our lives. The Bible also says in Proverbs 27, 6, that wounds from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. What does that mean? That means that the truth, though it might hurt people's feelings, is better and is more loving than to just pat people on the back, coddle them, cater to them, flatter them, just so that you know they feel good, but it leads them down a path of destruction and leads other people down that same path. I'm sharing this because what I believe Megyn Kelly is saying here in this video 
is something that we as Christians, we, we need to, we, we need to applaud. We need to embrace. I'm really grateful for her courage. We need more people who are willing to say the difficult thing in these days. And again, this isn't to say, this isn't to be rude. This isn't to be, um, inflammatory for the sake of being inflammatory. I'll tell you right now, there's people in my life that I know who struggle with all this sort of stuff and I care about them. And if we had a conversation about what I believed, I would say the same thing that I'm saying right now on this video. God loves them. God has a purpose for their life. God has a plan, but we can't bend truth to, 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 we, we can't remove truth altogether because what happens is what we're doing with this narrative is we are abandoning truth altogether for the sake of people feeling good about themselves. And that's not actually helping them. If we go back to this one, that, that one article that I showed you, it's not actually helping people. It's actually making the problem worse. And the reason why is the truth is what sets people free. The truth, Jesus said, is what sets people free. We can't, we can't be set free when we're bound in lies. And we can't help people when we continue to propagate lies and encourage lies. And I'll tell you as a dad of a daughter, I'll tell you as a husband of a wife, for the sake of women, God cares about women. God cares about their rights and their protection. For the sake of women, real women, we need to, we need to be willing to stand up and say, hey, enough is enough. We need to have a real conversation about this. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, though. I want to. I care about what you think. Let's make this a conversation. But I think it's important that Christians, particularly, we stop sitting on the sidelines. We get honest about this issue.